Now, before we dive into the specifics around the CK, I want to take a couple of videos just to talk about some differences in certification. So the first that I want to talk about is the CKA versus the CKAD. Okay, and what we're going to be diving into this a little bit, but quick PowerPoint and then we'll get the web browser open and we'll see what it looks like. Now, first, CKA very infrastructure focused okay environment configurations at the platform level we're talking networking we're talking scaling we're talking cluster configurations okay now from the ckd level we're talking developer focused environment configurations but at the application level and like i said in the intro video cka is still the most sought after cert i would say more than the ckd definitely again i i i don't think that it's necessarily a technical reason. I think it's more just the CK has been around. It's very popular. The CKD has been around for a while too, but the CK was really like the first one to hit mainstream, so to speak, All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the web browser really quick. And the first thing that we're gonna see here is the CK. So again, like we discussed, all infrastructure pieces. So we talked about storage, troubleshooting, workload and scheduling, cluster architecture and services and networking. And here are all the pieces that we're gonna be hitting. So as we can see here, again, very infrastructure focused, very cluster focused. However, from a CKD perspective, if we go ahead and if we scroll down, notice how we still have services and networking, okay? But we're talking about application environment pieces. So we're talking about config maps, we're talking about resource requirements, we're talking about service accounts, we're talking about secrets, okay? Now, from an application observability perspective, we're talking about API versions, we're talking about various CLI tools, we're talking about debugging. Now, a couple of these things do have overlap with the CKA. So for example, we're gonna be talking about service counts, we're gonna be talking about requests and limits and quotas, okay? But if we take a look here again, we can really see that it's definitely focused more on the pods, more on the services, more on the updates. We can see some blue green stuff here. We can see some canary stuff here. We see Helm for package management. We see API information. So this is definitely far more focused on the development piece. And again, if we just go back here to the CKA, we can see, yeah, it talks a little bit about workloads and stuff like that. You know, we got one thing here that says pods, but you know, a lot of it is really focused on the cluster, on the nodes, on scalability, on high availability, on the overall configuration of the cluster. So when we're thinking about it, CK equals infrastructure, CKD equals development. All right, the next one that we're gonna take a look at here is the CKA versus the KCNA, okay? So the biggest thing that I wanna mention here is the KCNA is like CKA light. Now, it's not a prerequisite to the CKA. You don't have to take the KCNA before you take the KCA or the CKA. <laughs> However, I would recommend at least studying the KCNA first if you don't have too much Kubernetes experience. So from a CKA perspective, and last time I checked, I believe they want you to have at least one to two years of experience in Kubernetes before taking the CKA. Why? It's a pretty big cert, okay? <laughs> it, it's, it's a big, hefty, harder cert, all right? There's a lot of information when it comes to the CKA. So what I would recommend is if you want to take a look at the KC and A information, again, because it's like the CK Lite, it's all based on infrastructure and stuff like that, but just less, <laughs> okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the web browser here really quick. All right, so we have the KCNA here, the Kubernetes and Cloud Native Associate, all right? So if we go ahead and if we open this up, notice, again, very, very uh, not the same information in terms of volume and length, all right? It's definitely a little bit shorter. So this is really just a certification that's high level, all right? It's really just talking about the basics. I mean, 46% of it is just around resources and architecture and the API, et cetera. So it's very, very high level. And then you have a little bit around, you know, observability, you have a little bit around application delivery. And you're gonna see, again, you're not going to have to necessarily study as much and as hard because this is more of an 
entry level certification where it's literally just giving you the high level and the basics. So you have some auto scaling stuff in here. You have serverless in here. You have uh, community and governance. You have roles and personas, open standards. But really what the core focus here is the container orchestration piece, the fundamentals, okay? And then a little bit of CICD and a little bit of GitOps. So ironically enough, you know, again, you'll hear KCNA kind of talked about as like the CK light because it's more infrastructure focused, but you do have, you know, a couple little tidbits here like GitOps and Prometheus and cost management. But again, we're talking 8% here versus 46%, almost half of the entire exam around Kubernetes fundamentals, like the infrastructure piece and the scaling and the overall container piece. Okay. So again, if we take a look at who the certifications for it's for candidates interested in advancing to the to the professional level through a demonstrated understanding of kubernetes foundational knowledge and this is the big part here that i want to point out it's designed for candidates interested in advancing to the professional level not candidates that are already at the professional level but candidates that want to advance so again if we take a look at the cka here it's a certification for kubernetes administrators it's expecting you to already be an administrator okay it's expecting you to know kubernetes now some prerequisites here there are no prerequisites but again it does you know hope at least that you have a little bit of knowledge in kubernetes already and last but certainly not least is the CK versus the CKS. Now, the CKS is security focused. So it's everything at the security level from the workflows to the pods to the scheduling to all Kubernetes components, everything on the control plane, everything on the worker node. And if I'm not mistaken, we're going to double check this here, but the CKA last time I checked is a prerequisite of the CKS. Okay. So it's something you have to be thinking about here. It's a prerequisite and it kind of makes sense because you can't secure something unless you know it, right? So you got to know the underlying infrastructure and what pods are and how they all work, etc., to secure something. So let's go ahead and take a look at the browser here really quick and opening up the certified Kubernetes security specialist CKS. I just want to double check my math here. Prerequisite. Yep. Active non-expired CKA certification is a prerequisite for this exam. So you must have passed the CKA to be able to go through the CKS. Now let's go ahead and let's open up all of this information here, okay? Now you're gonna have to go through cluster setup, so CIS benchmarks, ingress object control, or security control rather. You're gonna have to go through restricting access to the Kubernetes API, lots and lots of RBAC. You're gonna have to go through IIM roles. You're gonna have to go through minimizing access from an external perspective to the network. And then microservice vulnerabilities, supply chain security, and lots and lots of monitoring, logging, and runtime security. So again, definitely makes sense why the CKA would be a prerequisite for the CKS. Cause like I said, you can't secure something unless you know it. So if you jump in here and if you look at these competencies, notice there's nothing around like teaching you about the API server or teaching you about other control plane components or teaching you about pods. It's okay, you got the knowledge, let's now harden it, all right? And if we take a look here, CKS is an accomplished Kubernetes practitioner, okay? So again, you've been working in Kubernetes already. You got the CKA. Right, And it's somebody who demonstrated competence on a broader range of best practices for securing applications. So going into this, it's already expecting you to work in Kubernetes environment. It's expecting you to even know how to secure them. Okay, So you got to have some good information. Okay, so before we wrap up the comparisons, I want to just say one more thing. When it comes to the CK, the CKS, and the CKD, they are hands on on certifications and this is what differentiates kubernetes certifications with other certifications what i mean by hands-on is it's not multiple choice <laughs> you are literally on a terminal running commands doing the thing you're not just answering questions from a theoretical perspective you are on the terminal 
getting it done. You're in a environment that Linux Foundation gives you. It's a virtual environment. It's based off of Cube ADM. We're going to be talking a lot about Cube ADM in this certification. And you're going to go through and you're going to configure an environment. You're actually literally going to configure it. So one of the other reasons why, you know, combining this real world stuff with the CKA is perfect because it gives you the opportunity to get hands on, be on the keyboard, be in the terminal, just like you would be in the real world, but it allows you to also prepare for the certification. Okay. Now, when it comes to KCSA, when it comes to KCNA, we didn't talk about KCSA because at the time of recording this, it's still in beta and it's not fully out yet, but it's like the CKS Lite. It's like KCNA, like a lighter version, but for security. Okay. So when it comes to KCNA, the KCSA, they are multiple choice because they're entry level certifications, but the CKS, CKAD, CK, they are not entry level certifications. So when you go into these certifications, when you sit for the test, be aware that you are literally going to be on the keyboard typing commands. Okay. Now the good news is, is that you do have access to Kubernetes docs. You can look up Kubernetes docs, but it has to be from the official Kubernetes docs page. It can't just be you Googling stuff. You have to find the answer on the docs page. Now, I do not recommend relying on that, okay? Because there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of stuff you gotta do in the exam, and a lot of people run out of time when they're taking the exam. So I do not recommend relying on the docs, okay? So you still wanna really, 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 really study for this.